So here we're going to talk about EBITDA multiples and how we can compare different companies that are in the same industry or maybe they're in a related industry, right? Because as you can see, enterprise values for these three companies, they're very different, right? And for each company, they also generate a different level of EBITDA. So to calculate EBITDA multiples, it's pretty simple. You just take enterprise value divided by the EBITDA, right? It could be from the current year, it could be forecasted EBITDA, whatever it is, whatever you want to use, and divide that and you get your EBITDA multiple. And it's expressed typically as a number, right? So in this case, right, jet ski company, they've got enterprise value of $100,000 and they're generating $20,000 of EBITDA. Well, their EBITDA multiple would be 5X. Now, same for wakeboard company, they've got $250,000 of enterprise value. They're using an EBITDA of 40,000 and that one gives them a 6.25X, right? And for G5 jet company, it's 500,000 and they have $60,000 of EBITDA, right? And that results in an EBITDA multiple of 8.33X. Now, this is a great ratio because it allows you to compare companies in different values, right? So they all have different enterprise values. They all have different EBITDAs, but now we can say, okay, what is their earning power and how are they trading, right? So that is the EBITDA multiple. Now, EBITDA multiples are most commonly brought up when you're talking about selling or buying a company. Because as a seller and buyer, you want to compare the EBITDA multiple for the company you're purchasing or selling to other recent multiples, right? To understand if you're paying more or less, or if you're a seller, you're selling it for as much as you can, or if potentially your sales price is too high. Now, EBITDA multiples, very straightforward. Enterprise value, that's a difficult number to calculate, right? But we won't get into that here. Now, the next thing to touch on is who benefits from a higher or lower EBITDA multiple. Now, if you're a seller, you want that multiple to be as high as possible, right? Because that means the enterprise value that you're trying to sell your business for, well, that's much higher as a multiple than the current EBITDA that your business is generating. So if you're a seller, as high as possible, right? Now, on the flip side, if you're a buyer, you want as low of a multiple as possible because a higher multiple means you're paying a higher multiple of the earnings power. And a lower multiple means you're getting maybe a discount or a bargain compared to, you know, what else is going on in that industry. So from the seller's perspective, they're going to compare that EBITDA multiple to recent transactions. And if they feel pretty bullish about the sale of their company, they might have an EBITDA multiple that is a bit above recent transactions. Now, if you're a buyer, you always want to make sure you're below EBITDA multiples from recent transactions and you can try to get it as low as possible, right? So there's always this push pull between a seller and a buyer. Um, but at the end of the day, it's a negotiation. How badly do you want to sell the business and how badly do you want to buy the business?